Hey folks, we'll get to Classic Radio Theater here in just a moment, but I want to remind all of our podcast listeners that on almost all of these podcast platforms, there are ways to show that you like the show. If you would do that by either thumbs up, five star rating, whatever it is, give us a positive rating. There's a reason for that. It helps our show grow and it helps us be able to prove that we're providing good shows so that we can keep doing the shows and also a reminder over at classicradio.stream we have the buy me a coffee feature if you can do that drop me a couple bucks that would be great as well help me acquire some new shows for us to air because we're always finding new shows thanks to so many of our good collector friends so please uh if you like the show like it if you, and by the way whatever platform you're on there is some sort of rating system So please use that and rate us positively so that we can grow this program. Because after all, you enjoy the shows. I want us to be here bringing you these shows for years to come. Thanks for listening. Now, on with the show. Now... The greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. We're going to spend this hour with Bob Bailey as yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, we have mentioned this before, and I think it bears repeating, that for about 14 months, Bob Bailey and yours truly, Johnny, as yours truly, Johnny Dollar, ran for a 15-minute nightly radio program. Of course, the show goes back to 1949, up through 1954 with a variety of artists playing Johnny Dollar, but I don't think any of them played it better than Bob Bailey. CBS tried to do a nightly quarter-hour show, and some of those shows are just the best. They're they're really outstanding. CBS decided to do away with the quarter-hour shows and put Bob Bailey on Sundays uh, for a 25-minute show. And those shows, while still pretty good quality, Bob Bailey really carried those shows and did a great job of them. Uh, Bob Reddick did not do a good job, in my opinion, who followed uh, Bob Bailey when the show moved to New York. Bob Reddick, of course, in New York acting. And then Mandel Kramer took over. He was the last Johnny Dollar, and he didn't do a half bad job, though. Uh, Close to Bob Bailey, but not quite as good. Anyway, these quarter-hour shows uh, are we play on a regular basis. The half-hour shows we play periodically, and that's what we're going to bring you today. This half-hour, yours truly, Johnny Dollar Show, actually 25 minutes long, was originally broadcast Sunday, June 22nd, 1958. And if you can believe the title, it is The Virtuous Mobster Matter. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hi there, Johnny. This is your old pal, Lefty. Lefty? Well, sure. You remember. Lefty Stemper. Huh? You know, down here in Virtue. Virtue? V-I-R-G-U. Virtue. South Carolina. Oh, sure. (laughs) You remember? Me and the boys, we occupied this caraway plantation down here on the P.D. River. Well, sure, of course. Listen, are you having trouble again with old man Caraway? Oh, no, sir. Not a bit. And you know how we stopped them, me and the boys, from making trouble for us? How, Lefty? We bought them out, that's how. <laughs> yeah, we give them 100 Gs for the place, <laughs> cash money. Now we own a whole entire plantation. Well, good for you, but now what's your problem? Well, Johnny, we fixed this place up real nice since you've seen it. You know, we spent a lot of dough on it. So? So we want to buy a lot of new insurance on it. Oh, well then hop on over to Georgetown and see your old friend Joe Picatello about it. Old friend, huh? After all, he's your insurance agent. Yeah, is he... Well, sure, of course he is. Didn't he send you all the other insurance, you... Lefty, has something happened to Joe? Yeah, only I don't know what it is. What do you mean? Well, that's just it. I don't know. I, I talked to him on the phone, asked him to come out here. He says, okay. But he don't come. You think somebody's knocked him off? Then I call him again. He says, okay again. He'll be right over. But he still don't come. Well, have you gone over to Georgetown to see him, to see what's the matter? 
five, six, maybe even half a dozen times. But every time he ain't there. Lefty, I don't get it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There's something wrong about it, Johnny. And if I was you, I'd come down here and find out. You know something? I think you're right. <laughs> Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Continental Insurance Company Home Office, New York, New York. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the virtuous mobster matter. Expense account item one, seven dollars eighty-five cents, train to New York City and taxi to the office of Continental Insurance Company. Fortunately, my contact there, Ben Orloff, was in. Come in, Mr. Dollar. Come in. Thanks. How Sit are down. you? Sit down. Thanks. Now, Mr. Orloff... Wait a minute. Uh, don't tell me you never received that check for your services down in South Carolina. Oh, yes, I got that. Why, well, I had I... that mailed out to you nearly two months ago. Yes, I said I got it. I, eh? uh... Oh. Oh, good. Incidentally, I thoroughly enjoyed your report on that case. The Village of Virtue matter, you called it? Uh, yes, So I why know. a group of ex-gangsters should decide to settle in a town called Virtue, I'll never understand. Well, they... Were they really behaving themselves, as your report indicated, or had they been using that old plantation for a sort of hideout? Their records have been cleaned down there for over 20 years now. Is that so? Well... <laughs> well, uh, maybe the answer to organized crime is to give all those fellows a nice, quiet plantation to live on. Yes. Though I must say that when our agent down there, Joseph Picatello... It's about Joe that I've come to talk I to. must say that I was a bit concerned when I found Joe had sold policies to characters like Lefty Stemper and Bully Magoon and Flippy Lacker. Mr. Orloff... Why, those were the very sort of men that Thomas E. Dewey chased out of New York when he was D.A. some years ago. Mr. Orloff... That was before Dewey became governor, you know. So naturally, I... Uh... What were you going to say about Joe Picatelli? Have you heard from Joe recently? No, no, I don't think I have now that you mention it. Because I just Why? talked over the phone. Wait. You must understand one thing, Mr. Dollar. Oh, what's that? Our office down there in Georgetown is probably the smallest one we have in the whole country. Joe really doesn't handle much business for us, you know. Yes, I understand. I understood that when I talked to him in April. If it weren't for those those mobsters over in virtue... mobsters Mr. Orland. Well, if it wasn't for them and some of the townspeople to whom we've issued policies, I'd... Mr. Dollar, has something happened to Joe Picatello? That's what I want to find out. Because now that I think about it... Excuse me. Miss Bailey? Yes, Mr. Orloff. Did you ever get a reply on the harm and policy from Mr. Picatello in our Georgetown office? No, sir. I've written Mr. Picatello several times now. Thank you. Dollar? We wrote Joe about that Harmon matter over four weeks ago. Well, didn't it occur to you to phone him and find out why he hasn't answered you? But it involves such a small policy that... Uh, yes. Perhaps I'd better try to call him. Miss Bailey? Wait. Yes? Uh, nothing. What? I said nothing. Well, Mr. Dollar? Well, Mr. Orloff, if something has happened to Joe Picatello... Well, look, instead of spreading the alarm, how about if I quietly run on down there? But have you reason to believe something wrong has happened to him? Only from what his clients down there at the plantation have told me over the phone. You... You think perhaps some of his old gangland enemies have got to him? After 20 years? I don't know. But if you'll okay my expense account, I'll go down there and see. Well, now, Mr. Dollar... And if you uh... won't, I'll go down there anyway. But there's the danger, too. This might be a very dangerous... Let me... Let me hear from you as soon as you can, Mr. Dollar. <laughs> Two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. From June 22nd, 1958, yours truly, Johnny Dollar on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. You ever make a change and then think, why didn't I do this years ago? Well, that's how people feel about switching to MediShare for their health care, especially now with inflation the way it is. People are very happy with the savings. Most families save about $500 a month when they switch. It's a huge help when prices are going up so fast in so many other areas. And MediShare's customer satisfaction rate is double that of health insurance. It's just a different experience, and people really like that. MediShare is an alternative to health insurance. It's a community of Christians 
who share each other's health care bills. And it's been going strong for over 25 years. It really is the gold standard, the most trusted name in health care sharing. Find out why people love it. Find out why they rave about the customer service and find out how good it feels to save some money right now. They're super easy to talk to. Here's the number. 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. 833-34-BIBLE. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox continues now. You know, what's really interesting is that almost all of the 15-minute years truly Johnny Dollar shows that Bob Bailey did, we have excellent quality copies of. But very few of the quarter-hour shows we have of really good quality. So I'm glad that we've got this one from June 22nd, 1958, The Virtuous Mobster Matter. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Virtuous Mobster Matter. Expense account item two, $28 even, transportation and incidentals, New York City to Georgetown, South Carolina. It was late when I pulled into the prosperous little southern community, and it was dark, pitch dark. Item three, 50 bucks deposit on a rental car. Item four, 70 cents for a sandwich and a Coke at an all-night diner. Then I drove over to Joe Picatello's on a side street near the park. The small frame building that served as both office and living quarters for Joe was dark. But in the hope he might be asleep in his little apartment up above, I knocked. No answer. Until I was about to turn and go back to my car, there was the sound of a door slamming somewhere inside. But still no light showed. I knocked again. Then, faintly, I heard footsteps approaching. But why hadn't Joe turned on the light in there? Yeah? What do you want? Joe. Yeah? Joe, open up. It's Johnny Dollar. Johnny who? Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator, you know. Investigator? That's what you said? Are you kidding? What's the matter with you, pal? Open up. Yeah. Sure. Hiya, Joe. What's the idea? No lights in here. You forget to pay your bill or something? Maybe. What do you want? What? Investigator, you said, Willie. Did you hear that? Willie? Yeah, I heard. Hey, what is this? Don't move. Huh? Oh, oh no, you don't. Oh. 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 All right, Willie, I got his gun. I hit him again. Yeah. Again. Once more. Okay, okay. There he is, out like a light. Yeah. What do you want I should do with him now? Huh? You crazy, Willie? You mean you don't... No. Okay, but if I blast him here, it's going to make a lot of noise, and if anybody... Yeah. Listen. Hey, it's a car. Coming down the street. Investigator, you said. So he wouldn't be working alone. Come on, out the back way. But I know who's going Shut to up, stay here. Shut up, get out of here. I don't, don't, don't see no lights on, Lefty. Well, maybe Joe's went to bed, if he's there. He didn't answer the phone when you c- c- called him. Listen, Flippy, Johnny Dollar told me I should come down here and look for Joe myself. So come on, we'll see. Oh, oh, well, whatever you say, Lefty. Only I th- thought that uh, Johnny was coming down here himself to... <clears throat> huh? Hey, look, this door's open. Yeah, yeah you you look well, what, well, what I stepped on. Joe, Joe, what happened to you? That, that, that ain't Joe. Hey, it's, it's Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar. Hey, you're right, Flippy. Somebody must... Listen, I'll get away. Oh, Johnny, Johnny... Johnny, it's me. It's me, Lefty. Lefty. And me, 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 Flippy. Johnny, okay? You all right? Yeah, I... Oh, holy... Who oh, 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 done this to you, Johnny? Yeah, we'll murderize him. Hey, Flippy, turn on some lights. Yeah, yeah, sure. What the hell happened in here? You know who done this to you, Johnny? Yeah. Yeah, yeah? It, it was... Oh, hey, come here, Flippy. Help me lay him up on the sofa. Sure, sure, Lefty. Easy, easy. Yeah, take it easy. Yeah. Sure, sure. Here, here now. Yeah. yeah. All right, now. Johnny, listen to me. Who, Johnny? Who? Yeah, 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 Johnny. 
I can't believe it, but uh, I could see him in the light from the street. Who? who? Joe. What? Joe Pigatello. Smokey Pigatello done this to you? Another guy with him. Called him Willie. Willie the Lump? Why? Why did he do it? I don't know. Acted very strange when he came to the door. But I don't get it. He was my pal. He was your pal. And well, Willie the Lump with him. That, that, that's what I don't get. It means he's went back. That's what it means. He's went back to the old racket, dope smuggling. No, no, no. Yeah, him and Willie the Lump was partners in the old days. But, but t- t- 20 years, Joe's b- b- been straight, Lefty. L- like you and me and Bully Magoon. Yeah, for 20 years, you and me and Bully, the only guns we ever used was for hunting. For killing snakes. But not no more. What do you mean, Lefty? Joe Pigatello done this to you, Johnny. Means only one thing. There's only one thing we can do. No. He's right, Johnny. No, no, Lefty. Yeah, Johnny. First, we take you back to the plantation where you get all right again. No, no, listen to me. Then we find Joe Pigatello. Flip and bully and me. No. And we do. Huh? Well, now, what are you punks doing here, huh? Hey. Joe. That's right. Who'd you expect? And what's the big idea? All right, don't move. Because, Joe, I'm going to blast your head off. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. This is Groucho Marx. A few days ago, I was talking with the director of civil defense, and he told me some things that I feel everyone should know. That's why I'm speaking to you now. Did you know, for example, that your chances of surviving an atom bomb attack are excellent? It's true, but there's a big if. You must do everything possible now to help yourself and your family. Nobody else will help you. Listen, because this is important. Keep a complete first aid kit handy. Keep a closed container of drinking water in your refrigerator. Enough for three days. Be sure you have a good fire extinguisher. Take a look around your house right now and pick out the safest spot, away from windows and doors. Make sure that every member of your family understands he is to rush to that safe spot when there's danger. I'm convinced that these precautions are necessary right now. And I hope I can convince you. They're important to your family, yourself, and your community. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Virtuous Mobster Matter. To say the atmosphere was tense there in Joe Pigatello's office in Georgetown, South Carolina, would be the understatement of the week. After the beating I'd taken from the ex-gangster and one of his pals, my old friends Lefty and Flippy had come in that found me there. And they couldn't understand why Joe had done this to me. Unless... It means he's went back. That's what it means. Went back to the rackets. Oh, Willie, the lump was with him. Him and Willie was partners in the old days. Dope, not So the two of them swore to get Joe. And then suddenly we looked up to see someone standing in the doorway. It's Joe! It was Joe Picatello. That's right. Now, who'd you expect and what the... All right, I... don't move. Because, Joe... I'm going to blast your head off. Oh, now put that thing down, Lefty. Don't move. What is it, Slippy? A gag or something? Is it a gag what you've done to Johnny Dollar? Huh? Johnny. I said one move and I'll give it to you. Johnny. Turn around, Joe, or I'll shoot you in the back, you dirty... What did they do to you, Johnny? Listen, Joe. Lefty. Slippy, I'll kill you for this. What are you talking about, you dirty rat? Wait, Lefty. Johnny's my pal. Like you used to be before you went back in the rackets. Went back in the rackets? Yeah, yeah, with that that dope hound little Willie the Lump. What do you know about Willie the Lump? Plenty. Now that you're back with him. You're crazy. It's no good, Joe, because Johnny recognized you. You and Willie the Lump when you waked him over. And I tell you that I had... 20 years, you and Bully and Flippy and me, we showed we could do it straight. We could be respectable. Me and the boys at the plantation, you down here. But now you spoiled it. You ruined it for all of us. Look, will you listen? Don't move. We made a deal. You and me and the boys. 20 years ago... If anybody slips, anybody breaks up our respectable life, he gotta go. Was that the deal? Yeah, yeah, that was the deal. But you, you don't know what you're talking about when you say I'm going back. All in the... right, so you, your lousy scum, you not only go back, you do this to Johnny Dollar, my friend, the guy who believed in us. Lefty. So for that, you gotta go. Lefty, listen. Now, Joe. Right. Lefty. Give me a gun, Lefty. No, Johnny. That, that, that was the deal. You ever use a gun on a man, you'll go up for the rest of your life. Johnny, it's for you. I'm killing him. Hand it over, Lefty. Okay, thanks. You see, it, 
It wasn't Joe who worked me over. What? what? I thought it was. It, it looked like him. It, it sounded like him. And it was him. Look at his hands, his face, his clothes. Is this the man I fought with in here five minutes ago? Sure, maybe I did get the worst of it with two of them on top of me. But believe me, I cut them up some, too. He's right, Lefty. Yeah. Yeah, but then I don't... Look, if it wasn't him... The twin. The twin. You're right, Lefty. It must be the twin. The, the twin here? All right, boys. Let me in on it, too, yeah, will you? Shep Larko, the twin they called him. That's what the law called him. Called him and Joe, the twins. Because they looked like each other. They talked like each other. <laughs> they was always the alibi for each other. But, but, but what's Shep Larko doing here? I, I, I can't tell you, Flippy. Not yet. All right, Joe. All right. I believe you. About not working over Johnny here. Because of what he says about... Well, about you and me, it must up. But if you and Shep are back in the rack... I'm not, Lefty. That's straight. No. All right, then tell me. Where you been? I I, I can't tell you. Three, four weeks now, we don't know where you are. The insurance company... Well? I'll tell you. Now, now listen. Oh, you listen. You listen. If Shep and Willie have been here, they'll be coming back. Why? Yeah, Joe, why? I can't tell you. I I, I can't tell you. Huh? All right. Listen. We're listening, Joe. The, the Secret Service. Huh? Well, after those killings up in Baltimore. During that smuggling job? Yeah, Johnny. They knew the twins, Shep Locker and Willie. Well, the boys in Washington knew they did it. But they didn't know where to find them. Well, go on, Joe. So they sped the way. Uh, the Secret Service sped the way. Did yeah. I know where Shep and Willie were? That, that I would lead them to them? You knew where they was, huh? No, but the law boys knew that to flush them out. Get Shep and Willie out looking for me. Gunning for me. And the Secret Service didn't keep you undercover? Yeah, until today, back in Washington. But I talked to you on your phone right here. Oh, the line was rigged through to Washington. You said, until today, Joe. Yeah, because Shep and Willie didn't show. The law boys had to make them show. So then they sent you here as living bait? Yeah. And they passed the word that you'd be here? That's it, Johnny. That's why Shep and Willie were waiting here when you came. That's why they'll come back now that I'm here. Boy... You stuck your neck out for the sake of going straight. I couldn't help myself. The, the Secret Service rigged it on me. Guy named Phillips. But now you're all in it. So, Flippy, turn out the lights. Yeah, let's get out of here. Oh, no. What? We're listening to an episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, this hour from uh, June 22, 1958, The Virtuous Mobster Matter. Now, in the next half hour, we'll not only conclude this episode, but we'll also conclude the five-part Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar story, The Purling Matter, from June 22, 1956. But first, some very important messages from your favorite station on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. You know, for years you've heard me talking about my pillow here on Classic Radio Theater. And the My Pillow and Mike Lindell have right now a huge buy one, get one free extravaganza. And uh, what are the things they include? They include several different varieties of my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillows are buy one, get one. Roll and go anywhere my pillows. I, by the way, have one by my recliner. It is delightful, and many times I don't intend to doze off, but I do. Also, the six-piece towel sets, sets and bed sheet sets, those are all available. Buy one, get one. Now, they've set us up our own page over at MyPillow.com. You go to MyPillow.com slash USA. That's MyPillow.com slash USA, and you will find links to all the current Buy One, Get One specials. Plus, with everything you buy now, you get Mike's soft cover book, What Are the Odds, From Crack Addict to CEO. It's a $20 value, but you have to use the promo code USA. You get the book free when you purchase anything. Dog beds, $19.99, as low as $19.99 with the promo code and, and you know those dogs love the MyPillow dog beds. And the MyPillow slippers, pet blankets, complete mattress systems, two-inch mattress toppers. Those are delightful. Go to MyPillow.com slash USA or call 1-800-951-8175. Use the promo code USA at checkout. 
MyPillow.com slash USA, promo code USA, and save you a great deal on a great night's sleep and other things when you go to MyPillow.com slash USA. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, we have the conclusion of the yours truly Johnny Dollar story, The Virtuous Mobster Matter. This episode originally broadcast on Sunday, June 22nd, 1958. Oh, listen, we was crooks, but never killers. But it's killers that's coming to get Joe. What do you mean, Lefty? But they won't. And they won't get you, Johnny. Sorry, Lefty, I can't move. But then we're staying. For you and Joe. Yeah, right. So turn out the lights for B. You're too late, boys. Shep. The, the twin. That's right. Your old pal, Shep Larko. Keep a rat on him, Willie. Don't worry, Shep. Investigator, huh, Dollar? Only in Secret Service, ain't it? Is it? I knew we should have killed you when we had you, Dollar. But we thought these boys driving up was reinforcements. <laughs> reinforcements. We should have known the Secret Service wasn't that bright. All right, Willie, frisk him while I keep this gun on him. Sure. You know, none of you trying to... Not Dollar. We got his gun. Oh. Okay. Just what do you intend doing, Shep? They're clean, Shep. What do you think? All right. Joe gets it first. Put your gun up close so it don't make no noise. Go ahead, Willie. Yeah. <laughs> You got them both. And I thought you couldn't move. Yeah, but, but boy. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks. Thank Lefty for giving me his gun when I asked for it, Joe. Oh. Hey, look. Any of you guys know a good doctor? Yeah. I've said it before and I say it again. In this insurance business, you never know what you'll run into. Expense account total, including a flock of medical expenses and the trip back to Hartford, $174 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a story about a pattern. A very simple one, but a pattern for murder. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote today's story. Heard in our cast were Gene Tatum, Jack Crucian, Les Tremaine, Billy Hallop, Frank Gerstle, and Gil Stratton, Jr. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. There you have it, June 22nd, 1958, Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. We'll conclude this hour of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar with an episode of from 1956 that concludes the purling matter. But first, we have these important words. Are you suffering with arthritis or osteoporosis? Do you have diabetes? Did you know that these are just two of the hundreds of diseases that have seen improvement with Dr. Wallach's incredible longevity products? You can't get them at a health food store. The only way to get them is to call us at 800-214-0065. That's 800-214-0065. Do you have heart disease, fibromyalgia, or high blood pressure? Do you have a terrible time losing weight? Dr. Wallach can help. He was a veterinarian and cured diseases in animals. He felt that he could do the same for humans, so he became a physician. Over 50 years of research and helping people like you goes into every bottle of Dr. Wallach's amazing discoveries. Do you want to feel better? 
Learn how to treat the cause of your problem rather than covering up the symptoms with drugs. Call 800-214-0065. That's 800-214-0065. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, we wrap up the yours truly Johnny Dollar story, The Purling Matter. This Part 5 was originally broadcast on Friday, June twenty second, 1956. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Janice Floyd, Mr. Dollar. Hello. I understand you don't quite believe that Jeannie Perling is dead. That's about right. I'm really not concerned one way or the other what you believe or disbelieve. I do know that I've been through quite an ordeal lately. And if you have any plans for interfering or bothering me in any way, I'll call the police. All right. I hope you understand that. I do. Well, then, goodbye. Goodbye. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Eastern Liability and Trust Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the purling matter. I wrote to Morton Scottman at Eastern Liability and I explained the circumstances under which I had arrived in New Orleans and located Jeannie Perling. I enclosed her death certificate and the medical statement. I also reported on the conduct of her ex-roommate, Janice Floyd. Then I sat down and called Janice on the phone. This is Johnny Dollar, Miss Floyd. Yes. I think what? it's time we had a talk. Mr. Dollar, we have nothing to discuss. I think we have. What? How you're being taken. Taken? By whom? By a couple of people. Goodbye, Look, Mr. don't Dollar. hang up on me, Miss Floyd. I came down here to find Jean Perling. I'm with an insurance company. It was my job to check on a story her father told. Finding her was part of it. Let me come over and talk to you. I'll be home tonight. The apartment was six blocks from the hotel. I walked it for a reason. All kinds of people have followed me at one time or another, and I've followed all kinds of people. But the man who followed me off and on in New Orleans, the big blonde man with a 38, knew what he was doing. He was a professional. I made up my mind about that the first time I saw him. And I thought I was ready for him, but I wasn't. He waited until the streetlights got dim and no one was in sight. I vaguely remember that he caught me under the arms and laid me gently down on the street. That was all. Easy, buddy, easy. You've been making too much whoopee. Oh. You folks visiting down here ought to be more careful. Oh. Get your suit all dirty. I wouldn't have found you, but my cab conked out right here. Oh, my head, the side of my head. Yeah, you must have fallen hard. You had enough for tonight, or you want to keep going? Oh, I've had plenty. Yes, sir, I'll call a doctor. No, no, help me, I'll be all right. Go up. Easy now, easy. Thanks. What time is it? Uh, uh, almost midnight. Two hours. Where you want to go? Ursuline Street. Get in, get in. Expense account item 16, $10, to one good Samaritan cab driver who picked me up and dropped me at Janice Floyd's apartment. I was still weaving on my feet when I tapped on the door. Mr. Dollar, you've been hurt. Come in. I'm all right. Packing? Yes, I've decided to leave town. Tonight, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I thought it'd be something like that. Did a big fella, a blonde man, have anything to do with your decision to leave? That's none of your business. Let me tell you my business, Miss Floyd. I came down here to see Jean Perling. You saw her. She is dead. Yes, I saw her. Dead. Yesterday, I mailed a copy of her death certificate to New York. Well, then what else... What other business? The man who came here yesterday and reported to you. The man who told you I'd left town and you could breathe easier again. The same man who called you later and told you I was still around, still asking questions. He's my business. He followed me on my way here tonight. He slugged me. He... I don't believe you're telling me the truth. What's his name? Any idea why he carries a gun? Carries a gun? 
You're making all this up. Why would I? I've got what I came for, or practically what I came for, legal proof of the whereabouts of one Gene Perling. If Al hit you, he was trying to protect me. Now, listen to me. I think I have pretty much of it in hand. Now, you tell me if I'm wrong. First off, you're not any Janice Floyd. I'd guess that Janice Floyd was the girl who died of leukemia. I've got her picture in my wallet. It was given to me by David Perling, who said it was his daughter. This is all crazy. Before you go into that, listen. I can have that body exhumed. I don't want to do it, but I will if I have to. Now, do you want me to do that? All right. I'm Jean Perling. And that was the Floyd girl who died? Yes. She was sick, and... Well, I knew my father had detectives looking for me. I just never wanted to see him again or go home again. It seemed if... If poor Janice were dying and she had no one... If she somehow had my name and... Well, I'd never be bothered with my family again. That was a pretty idea. Was it yours? Al and I thought of it. Al? Al Britt. The blonde guy. Okay, how do you work it? He saw to it that Janice had my name. I know it was against the law, but it... Well, she had no one, and if she was buried with my name, then I'd be free of my family. Well, that took some managing. They hate me. They always have. I want my own life. I don't blame you. You're entitled to it. Are you sure that's what you're getting? I'm going to marry Al, no matter what. If you go back and tell them, well, that'll be that. If you let me stay dead, I... Can't let that happen. Why not? Why not, Mr. Dollar? What harm would it do? Let your father make a fool out of you? I don't understand. You're worth $100,000. What? Cold, hard cash. An irrevocable trust was set up on you when you were born. Comes to you when you're 25. That'll be next month. I don't care about the money. Now, wait a minute. In the event you should die before your 25th birthday, the money would revert to your nearest of kin. My father? Your father. But I'm dead on paper. Uh Uh-huh. Then Al... Al... Somebody paid him, probably your father, to make love to you. Oh, no. No. Get out of here, Dollar. Al, wait. I told you this man meant nothing but trouble. He knows all about it. Oh, he can't prove a thing. Get out of here, you. Take it easy, Brett. Al, Al. Yes, honey. I know about you. Uh, Honey, I... I don't know what to say. Go. Just go, please. He went... He looked at both of us as he went out the door. It was sort of a whip look. The way a puppy stares at you when you've caught him chewing on a slipper. I sat a while with Jean Perling. She didn't say much. There wasn't much she could say. I told her I didn't think there was any reason for her to go back to New York unless she wanted to. She said she didn't want to go, didn't know what to do at the moment, and, well, we left it at that. I went back to my hotel and tried to get some sleep. About 6 o'clock in the morning, I got up, bathed, shaved, and packed. By 7.30, I had breakfast and was just about to check out. Hello? Hello, Britt. Leaving? That's right. I'd like to talk first. Sure. Okay. You messed it up fine for her and me. I tried to call her this morning and she hung up on me. I went over there, she wouldn't let me in. I don't blame her, do you? I guess I don't. I've decided to leave town. Yeah, maybe that's better. I don't know whether it is or not. You make it hard for a guy to talk. All right, now look at it my way. This whole thing's been rotten. I met her father, and I know what kind he is. I know what he's done to her, what he'll do to her if she goes back. And then there's you, Britt, the hired man. You went in and made love to her for a salary. I didn't like it having to tell her that, and it must hurt. It must hurt pretty bad. So you see, I'm not too interested in what you might have to say or what you're going to do. Wait. You're right reading me out this way. I deserve it. The old man found out where she was four months ago. I found out for him. I knew the girl she was living with had leukemia. I planned the whole switch. I put it to her the way she explained it, about being dead to keep away from her old man. Of course, you didn't mention that 100000 he could get his hands on once she was dead. Oh, no, I didn't. But, but something funny happened to me, Dollar. I mean... Oh, I've done my share of dirty jobs. I've seen a lot of the human race. Taking a salary to make a sucker out of her didn't bother me at all. Not at first. And then I found out when she touched my face, I I lived for that touch. And when I held her, she, she lived for me. I never thought it had happened to me, but... 
It did. Yeah, if you see her again, Dollar, tell her I was trying to stop it. I mean, all this part. But it was too late. <laughs> Funny how things turn out, huh? Yeah. Funny. Expense account item 17, $42.13, hotel and board bill. Item 18, $101 even, airplane ticket back to Hartford. Item 19, $1, cab fare. I stop by her apartment on my way to the airport. Oh, I thought you'd left, Mr. Dollar. Well, I came to say goodbye. How's it going today? All right. I have some brandy. No, no thanks. Jean. Yes? You going to New York? No, I'll stay here a while. I don't want to see my father or mother. How about Al Britt? He wants to see you. Let's not talk about him, shall we? Do you think I'm a nice girl? Do you think my hundred thousand dollars will attract a lot of nice, eligible young men to me? Do you think oh, I... Oh, stop it. You'll burn your brakes. Oh, Johnny. Oh, no. Here. I know what he did. I know why he did it. But I love him. He did his job too well. Yeah. He could tell you what he started out to do and what happened to him with you. He could tell you... If you let him. He told you? Yeah. What kind of a trick is it? No trick. Couldn't be. The guy's too mixed up. Tell you what. He'll try again. When he calls up next time, talk to him. Why should I? Because you may not have a mother and father or anyone else. But you do have him. And you will have him as long as he lives if you want him. And that's what you've been looking for all your life. Someone to have. I'd take him if I were you. Item 20, $10, miscellaneous. Total expense account, $714.35. Remarks, none. Report, she took him. They were married in Tampa this morning. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's intriguing story. Next week, a lonely girl, a fine young man, a gentle father, and one of them is a killer. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Mary Jane Croft, Forrest Lewis, Jeanette Nolan, Russell Thorson, Michael Ann Barrett, Jack Petruzzi, Barbara Fuller, Herbert Ellis, and Marvin Miller. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino and Carl Fortina. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.
From June 22nd, 1956, yours truly, Johnny Dollar here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Among the actors that played uh, yours truly, Johnny Dollar, over the 12-year run, of course, we mentioned Bob Bailey. We mentioned Bob Reddick. We also mentioned Mandel Kramer, whom you hear sometimes in Counter Spy uh, that we air here frequently. But the uh, earliest Johnny Dollars, Charles Russell, Edmund O'Brien, and John Lund. And while all three were good actors, none of them were Bob Bailey. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, an hour's worth here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Thank this station, support their advertisers. It's their kindness and courtesy that uh, we're allowed to be with you each and every day here on your favorite radio station. Also, hope you will take a moment to uh, uh, visit my webpage, classicradio.stream, where you can stream our shows. You can learn more about building a classic radio collection of your own. You can contact me. You can also find our social media links. You can also, and this is the best part, buy me a coffee. Now, I don't drink coffee, but I'll use that for either another Dr. Pepper, or I will also use it to help buy new radio programs. Yes, I do acquire these programs out of my own pocket. Uh, these, this is not something that's paid more by some big corporation. I do it all myself. So if you want to do that, you have to buy me a coffee, our link at classicradio.stream. Oh, and our shows are available on podcasts. We have those uh, names over there. But all you have to do is search on your favorite podcast app for Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Thanks for tuning in. Tell all your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite station.